Uh, now, some of you uh, probably caught when I said earlier that uh, lean manufacturing, which is the basis for lean startup, comes from something called the Toyota production system from Japan. It's very interesting to see Kevin's presentation about uh, taking lean startup back to Asia when, in fact, uh, as you'll hear tomorrow, the history, real history of how lean first came to the United States is a very interesting story in and of itself. That's all my roundabout way of saying that I was a little bit nervous when I got an email from Toyota uh, not that long ago. And I was like, uh oh, I'm, I'm probably in trouble. Because, you know, I have been talking a lot about how we are taking principles from Toyota to, to encourage people like you to build organizations that are learning organizations that have Toyota's philosophy of long-term thinking that I talked about earlier, uh, really embodying those values. Now, at the time, absolutely everything I knew about Toyota I had read in books, which is a violation of the Toyota principle of Genshi Genbutsu, or go and see for yourself, uh, or as we like to say, get out of the building. Uh, so I was very nervous to get this email, but actually, uh, and it was from one of the speakers you're about to hear from, it was the beginning of a dialogue that has been really interesting to me and really opportunity for me to see those principles and values lived up close. Uh, and I am uh, proud to report that the people I have had a chance to work with at Toyota are as open-minded, as commitment to, committed to learning, and really the most non-defensive of any company I have ever worked with. Uh, so it's been really a privilege and an honor to work uh, with these next two presenters, Matt Cressy and Vinuth Rai. Thanks for the intro, Eric. Um, very excited to be out here talking to uh, the Lean Startup community. Uh, Matt and I with the uh, Toyota Info Technology Center. Uh, we're a research and development arm for Toyota Motor Corporation, and we're basically building a connected car. Um, we have about 40 people down in Mountain View working on uh, wireless networking, EVs, robotics, and uh, other technologies that will improve the automotive experience. So why are we talking about Lean Startup? Why is Toyota trying to learn Lean Startup? Uh, Vinuth and I actually attended this conference last year. And whenever we would talk with people, uh, they kept saying something to the extent of, uh, why are you guys here? Like, what do you have to learn? Like, aren't you guys pros at this already? Uh, and the truth is no. Like, uh, while it's true that uh, many of the principles uh, that formed the basis of Lean Startup uh, were based on the Toyota production system, as, as Eric mentioned. Uh, when it comes to our consumer-facing software development, uh, the stuff that we work on, such as navigation and uh, multimedia, we're still very much stuck in the traditional waterfall model. So we have a lot to learn. Uh, but we think that this is probably the case for most mature industries making software, especially those that are primarily concerned with safety and reliability. They have to go through a very rigorous process before they can release stuff. Nevertheless, uh, our customers have come to expect that the user experience, especially for software, is going to update to match uh, their changing expectations the same way that consumer electronics and web service companies do. Uh, but you would probably be surprised to learn that right now, uh, between the old and new system pictured above, it takes about three years to get this out the door. Um, but even worse than this is the fact that we're not really getting uh, customer feedback uh, from our drivers on the road until after we're launching the product. So effectively, uh, our cycle time through build, measure, learn is also three years. Uh, this is a big concern for us. Uh, Vinuth and I, and as well as the rest of our team, feel that if we can do customer development, incorporating this feedback throughout the development process, we're going to come up with a much better product. And this is what led us initially to Lean Startup. So it was um, Matt who read Eric's book first. He tells me about it. I, I read too. And we're like, yes, this is awesome. We should do Lean Startup, and we'll solve all our problems. <laughs> so uh, we, uh, we go out, and we uh, convince upper management that, you know, uh, don't change everything, but let's run Lean Startup in a small scale at our, at our center, and we'll see what kind of gains we can get out of this. So the book says, make an MVP. So we made an MVP. Um, making a navigation system, making a head unit, is not a trivial task. It takes time. It takes resources. Uh, we didn't have this. So what we did is we uh, took an Android tablet and um, stuck an Arduino board behind it, uh, wired it into the ignition and the steering wheel controls, packaged it in with a Toyota faceplate, and stuck it in a car. And that was our MVP. Um, it didn't have a lot of the stuff that a typical uh, navigation system would have. It didn't have AM, FM radio. It didn't have Bluetooth calling. didn't have a rear view camera. But that was fine. Uh, these were not the things that we were looking to improve. What we wanted to do was make a platform 
that helped us learn about customers and how they used mobile services in the car. So in addition to developing an MVP, we also had to find customers. Uh, and as an R&D group, we had never really interacted with direct customers. So uh, this was a new thing for us. Uh, we put up a Craigslist ad, uh, actually at the advice of Eric, to, to just invite people to come into our office to talk with us. And, and we were overwhelmed uh, by the fact that 300 people responded, that they were interested in, in com coming in and, and basically complaining about their driving experience. So, <laughs> so we filtered down based on, on the mass list of responses to about 30 people. And uh, we, we interviewed them one by one. And we got a really great sense of what the actual problems were in the car. And then we fed that basically in uh, to the development of the MVP, which was happening at the same time. From those 30 people, we identified five people that we could directly put our MVP into their existing vehicle. And by the end of the month, our trial was live. So like Matt said, we have an R&D organization, or are an R&D organization, and um, we couldn't sell directly to customers. So what we uh, told these guys was that uh, we put, your, put our system in your car. You can use it for a month. Uh, at the end of the month, we'll give you a choice. Uh, if you like it, keep using it. If you don't, here's 100 bucks. We'll take it off your hands. Uh, we felt 100 bucks was a good uh, proxy metric to help us uh, validate our value hypothesis and growth hypothesis. So fast forward a month, uh, we run our trial, we, we uh, give updates, we learn from them, we do all these things, and then we ask them, do you want to stay or leave? Uh, we have about 60% retention, 40% um, of those want to refer it to someone else. We feel pretty good about this. You know, we have, we have uh, done the process, we read the book, uh, we, uh, we feel good. And um, we said, we want, to we want to talk to upper management about this. We want to tell them that this is working. So we make and make, uh, go ahead, make the presentation, and their response was, so what? Um, <laughs> Toyota sells cars pretty well, you know, so the concept of retention and referral didn't make too much sense to them. They were like, why does this matter for us? Uh, the second issue was um, uh, they didn't understand um, why uh, or how this could connect to the mainstream product development process. So this is something that uh, took us back, and we had to sit, sit, step back and reflect. Uh, going, going into this, our expectation was build an MVP, establish a customer base, and then Toyota tells everybody, do lean startup, <laughs> right? So that didn't happen. So, uh, so we got very clear feedback that our metrics about a specific component were not important. They care about the whole car, but they were really interested in the ways that we had proved that, uh, I'm sorry, that we have improved the user experience of the individual features of our Navian multimedia system. So uh, they put it on us to basically figure out how we could connect these learnings from our customers uh, into the mainstream product groups, as well as the process we were using by which to derive these learnings. So. Uh, we're going to outline like the couple steps in reflection that we went through in order to do this. Needless to say, Toyota is a big company. You know, we have product groups everywhere. Um, in North America, we have groups in Detroit and Los Angeles. So we wanted to get our colleagues in, um, uh, in these offices engaged and part of our development process, where we were co-creating with customers. So what we did is we identified an event where these teams were getting together to benchmark competitor vehicles, and we told them, benchmark our system too. Uh, see how it stacks up against these units. And uh, we went down there, the team worked pretty hard, they polished the system, and we uh, uh, got everyone excited about the possibility of a customer-centric development process that everyone agreed could improve the product moving forward. So what came out of this meeting was that uh, a small working group was set up with these three offices, and we decided to run experiments together. So we sent our test cars out to uh, these two offices so that our colleague could experience what we had built and run experiments in parallel. So we had gotten them engaged. Uh, the next thing we had to figure out was basically what was a natural starting point. As Vinuth mentioned, we had never worked together, so this was a very new process for us. What we ended up doing was convening the LA and the Michigan groups at our office here in Mountain View. Uh, and we just started off with an open discussion about what we wanted the product vision to be. Uh, from this discussion, it resolved down to about 40 plus uh, feature improvements or assumptions about ways that we could improve the features. Uh, we took each one of those, put them on an index card, and placed them on a whiteboard, and then went through a prioritization process uh, where the axes were high and low impact in terms of how much each feature improvement would improve the overall user experience, and then also how hard or easy it would be uh, for a developer to build or Im uh, improve this feature. Uh, we then segmented out uh, the top uh, right corner, I guess, of the highest impact and easiest to develop uh, features. And we made that our initial starting point of experiments that we would run all three groups together as a team. 
So uh, we had our feature list, we had a prioritized list, we had our team together, and now we had to make sure that we stayed on track. We were running our experiments and we were learning. This was really the hardest part for us. Uh, we found ourselves often getting distracted. We fall in love with our ideas and always go back to bad habits and building what you know, felt good for us. Uh, what this meant was two things. One is we lose sight of the customer. We forget what's important for them. And uh, second and more deadly, I guess, is that we're not learning anymore. And if we're not learning, what we're doing is essentially waste. And I think that's uh, what we wanted to prevent from happening. So what we did is uh, we used a simple tool. I mean, Google Docs works superb for us. What we did is we just list up our experiments, make sure everyone's accounted for, we know who's doing what, and it helps us communicate very easily with a team in uh, different geographical locations. So this worked well for us. I mean, um, uh, and also it's boring, but it just has to be done. So uh, as Vinit mentioned, it's a very rigorous process. Uh, we update uh, the dashboard every single day. And going through this process of innovation accounting has actually forced us to be more creative uh, in the ways that we validate or learn things. So uh, previously, uh, or up to that point, rather, uh, our only way to validate experiments was to write code and to put it into the car and to have our customers ride around with it and then learn uh, based off that way. But it's very time consuming and, and resource intensive. So uh, we actually got a lot of great ideas from the Lean Startup community on uh, cheaper ways that we could get learnings. Uh, so we ended up um, mapping out each one of our experiments uh, to some of these techniques, uh, such as remote testing, clickable wireframes online, or doing Wizard of Oz testings, or just more advanced techniques with customer interviews. Uh, we ended up with a diverse mix, uh, with our criteria being what was the maximum amount of learning that we could get in the shortest amount of time. So eight months in, uh, we feel pretty good that we have uh, incorporated customer feedback into our process. Uh, we're engaged with product teams. We are constantly running experiments and feeding these learnings into the final product design. Uh, running Lean Startup at Toyota has not been easy. It's been quite challenging, but uh, we feel very confident that moving forward, the product's going to be vastly improved because we're incorporating customer feedback now as opposed to waiting till these cars hit the road. So we've been really happy to share our experiences uh, adopting Lean Startup thus far with you today, uh, but we're looking to uh, connect even more with the community moving forward. So uh, if you see us in the hallways over the next couple of days, please come up and talk with us. Uh, you can reach out to us also at our Twitter handles up there or our website. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you.